Hello and welcome. In this lecture, we're going to be talking a little bit about how you can read papers efficiently. So we're all busy. Um, and when we're trying to go and find information out about a topic, uh, we have a limited amount of time to do that. So it's really in your interest to develop skills around being able to find information as quickly as possible. So before we start, let me ask you two questions. So if you're going to be doing a review of the literature uh, uh, based upon an evidence-based practice type question, uh, is the goal of it to go and find uh, papers that you find interesting and to read them um, to, to understand your topic as a whole? Is that the goal of an evidence-based practice re review? Secondly, um, for papers that you think have potential, should you read them carefully all the way through? Well, think about those questions for a second. So I'm going to give you my take on the answer here. My take on the answer here is no, absolutely not. And the reason for that is that there's so much information out there. There's just massive, massive amounts of information about pretty much any scientific question that you ask. So I see the goal of uh, a research review, a literature review, to exclude irrelevant information, irrelevant information as quickly as possible. All right. So we've all been in the situation where we've gone to look for an answer to a question and we go and we start finding things and then we go off to the, find something else. And you go down this rabbit hole and you, you pick up your head and you find that two hours has gone by, right? Um, and you're no closer to actually answering the question that you were initially posing, right? And that's a normal thing to do. Um, but that's a real problem if you have constrained amounts of time. So doing literature reviews uh, really requires you having careful time management, and the way that you do this is by developing its skills um, and using specific t techniques to es essentially discard thing that's things that won't help you answer your question as quickly as you can. Now, the approach that you use will depend on the question that you're asking. I'm going to show you two different approaches that I personally use uh, that will that answers two different types of questions. Um, but regardless of what it is, it really does require that you have a clear question um, that, that you really understand. And that secondly, that you're really going to apply our understanding of the formal organization of papers to use that, uh, the location of different information to go through it really fast. All right. So uh, here are my strategies for doing this. So first off, before I start, um, what I do is try and build some general information about this area of scholarship. So to do that, what I'll go, do is I'll go on a, a database and I'll search for published literature reviews that are on this topic. So they, these literature reviews, which I'll discuss at a different point, are essentially uh, by experts in the, that area who have tried to synthesize uh, research on this topic area, uh, and they, they'll, ha they'll present their own opinion about it. Now, you may not find a literature review that answers your exact question, all right? Uh, in fact, that's quite likely. So in that case, you want to find a review that's sort of generally related to this question, all right? It might be a bigger question in some way. Um, but what this can do is it will give you a little bit of background on the general domain, the, the, the topic area that you're dealing with, um, and uh, that will help you start building your knowledge of the area. Um, it will also help you with being able to pull out keywords, different types of things that you might search for later on, right? Now, when you look at these, after you've found a few of these reviews, you can then look through them and say, oh, are there any papers in that review that kind of relate to what I'm looking at? So then you can go to the reference list and look up a few of those papers. And uh, those might give you a beginning of an understanding of what the scholarship generally looks like. Again, that's also going to help you find different key terms that you might search for in a database. So essentially, I do this to give, essentially give myself a, part, a, a start. Um, then uh, once I'm ready, then I go and do a search in a database to actually start finding papers that are of interest to me. So what's next? Um, so uh, this is strategy one for reading through, for identifying papers, 
All right. In this case, I do step one, which is essentially I just look at the title and abstract in that database. Uh, and this will just give me a gist of whether it's relevant or not to answering my question. Um, fairly quickly, I can get rid of about 95% of the papers that I, that I, that I view um, if I'm using a clear question. All right. Um, if a paper seems promising, then I might get the PDF for that paper. Now, uh, once I do that, um, and I, I've looked at the abstract and title, and I think that it's relevant, uh, then I'll very often just quickly go to the last uh, first, the last paragraph uh, uh, um, of the introduction. Right. So the last part of the uh, paragraph of the introduction is where the author typically will describe what the research is trying to do. All right. So based upon that, I can often eliminate a lot of other papers because if the question isn't really related to what I care about, then it's possibly not useful to me. All right. Again, what I point out here is I'm not reading the paper through in a, in a uh, distinct order. So you don't want to uh, download papers and then just start reading from the read through the introduction, read through the methods, read, read in order, because you want to make sure that's useful to you before you devote all that time. You don't want to get to the results section and figure out that it's actually not asking the questions that you care about before you discard that paper. You want to discard that paper as fast as possible. All right. All right, so step two, we see whether or not it's asking a question that you care about. Step three, I skip all the way to the end of the paper, and I look at usually the first paragraph of the discussion section. So the first, for, first one or two paragraphs of the discussion section often present to me uh, what the findings of the study were. So I'll just skim that quickly to see if the findings of the study are something I'm interested in. Okay. Um, if it looks like it's still promising, then I'll, I'll often go to the results section. And I won't read the whole results section, but I'll just take a quick look at the figures and tables. So figures and tables, typically, or quotes if it's a qualitative study. Uh, figures and tables typically pull out some of the main ideas that they're looking at. So it's a quick way of not necessarily reading the whole thing, maybe read the titles of the different sections of the results, but you're essentially doing a quick skim to see if what they looked at is of interest. And then, uh, then I might go to the method section and really make sure that the methods that they use really are relevant to what I'm interested in. So for steps one through five, I can typically uh, go through a paper in about uh, three minutes or so. All right. Usually in the first minute or two, I can get rid of papers that are not useful or interesting to me. Um, so again, remember our goal here, get rid of things as fast as possible that aren't going to answer your question. All right. Um, once I've eliminated the papers I'm not interested in, and, and I'm pretty convinced that this is something I care about, well, then I'll go and actually read the paper carefully. Um, now, uh, depending how carefully I do it will depend on how important it is for my purposes. So in some cases, what that means is I'll go through the paper and skim through it with a fair bit of attention. And sometimes I'll be digging in and really thinking about it carefully uh, for every section so that I really understand what it is. And that really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. All right. So there's another variation on this approach, which I also want you to be aware of. And this is a faster variation if I have a specific question that requires a very specific methodology. All right. So in that case, what I'll do is I'll do step one that I described before, which is looking at the title and abstract. And then what I'll do is I'll just go straight to the method section. So if someone, if for example, if I'm looking at, um, I'm interested in pain management, right? And uh, making sure that people are uh, trying to understand whether or not people are responding to some health condition in the way that's causing harm. Um, maybe I'm only really interested in one specific scale, one specific measurement for this. Well, what I'll do, I might not know that from the introduction or the, the abstract. Sometimes it'll be there, but sometimes it isn't. I might go, and after looking at the title and abstract, I might go to the method section and look specifically at the section that's talking about data collection and um, measurement tools. And then I'll look and I'll say, is this measurement tool a tool that I care about or is it not? If it's not, then I'm done. Um, the paper goes away. Right. Uh, so that can be a very effective if you have very specific questions that require specific things that can be an effective way of eliminating papers really fast. 
Uh, sometimes when I'm thinking about the question, what I'll do is I'll look at the question and I'll find the thing that I think is most unlikely to find. What is the thing that is usually the, the thing that makes or breaks a paper? So I was doing a review a while back that looked at young adults, and I only wanted papers that looked at uh, people between the ages of, uh, I think it was 9 and 18. And if they didn't have, if 50% of their sample wasn't between the ages of 9 and uh, 18, then I didn't want to look at the paper. So I just looked at that, and if it didn't meet that criteria, I got rid of it. And that got rid of most papers, actually. All right. Um, so there's no perfect re way to read papers. Um, I'm not saying that you have to do it the way that I just recommended. Uh, you can do, use your own judgment and see what makes sense for your own reading style and the questions that you're doing. But that being said, you do need to think about how you can be efficient and effective. Um, well, still not missing key studies. So you want to have an approach that doesn't uh, prematurely get rid of papers that could be useful to you. Uh, but regardless of how you do it, you have to have a certain amount of discipline so that you don't pick up your head two hours later and not have accomplished anything. And um, that you have a strategy that makes takes advantage of the, the, the structure of papers uh, so that you can go and find the information you need as fast as possible. All right, so I hope that that was helpful. This is just my personal view on how you read papers efficiently to accomplish your goals and do literature reviews fast. All right, thank you and take care.